Hello everyone, this is Damon with PixNub Software. In this video, I'm going to be discussing Chroma Key Lab, and I'm going to discuss the uh, modes that make compositions. Now I do suggest watching the video that goes over the extractions only workflow, because a lot of the things I discuss in that are the same as we use in these, in these other um, workflows, and I'm not going to rediscuss all the different options there. Um, but we'll just dive into these um, different workflows and I can show you the differences here. So in the first or the second column actually you've got um, workflows that do compositions only. And this is if you want to build compositions on pre-extracted images. So if you've already ran extractions um, using this first workflow or if you've extracted manually or hired out to have a service do the extraction, it doesn't matter. Once you have the extracted images, you can run these workflows to build your compositions. The last column is if you're doing extractions and compositions all at once. So if your images are in a, a green screen or a blue screen, and you want to extract and build the composition at once, this is the column that you'll use. So I'm just going to first show you um, one of these workflows here. And this is one of the composition only workflows. So the file settings are the exact same for all of the workflows and I discussed this in the extractions only video so be sure to watch that although it is pretty self-explanatory and this only has settings for building the compositions but nothing for the extractions if I go into the same middle workflow but on the right column everything is identical except for you have this extraction settings in the middle here. That's the only difference between those two columns is it will run the extractions and then it will do the compositions the exact same way. And within each column you've got three different workflows and they're very very similar. In fact there's only one difference and that difference is in how it positions the foreground. The top workflow is positioned the foreground based on edge detection, which is the same exact um, workflow as Chroma Key Lab version 1. The middle workflows, these use the portrait crop plugin to do face recognition image placement. And this does require the portrait crop plugin for these two workflows. If you don't have that, these will be disabled. Also, Portrait Crop requires Photoshop um, CC 2015.5 or higher. If you're on a previous version of Photoshop, these will also be disabled. But you can still run the other workflows if you don't have Portrait Crop or if you're on an earlier version of Photoshop. The last mode is um, the Paste in Place mode. This is for the case where you've um, your source images are already pre-composed and you got the foreground positioned exactly where it needs to be and the foreground has to match the size of the background the image sizes have to match but if you have pre-composed images like that it will do a paste in place in Photoshop which won't move the foreground around it'll put it in the exact exact place that you have it in the original image so I'm just going to demonstrate uh, the face recognition workflow for extractions and compositions. This is my favorite workflow to use. It's remembered the settings that I ran last time. And I'm not going to discuss the file settings again or the extraction settings because I discuss all these in detail in the extractions only tutorial. So be sure to watch that because I discuss all this. But I am going to change it to dual mask just because I want to show you something that's pretty cool here um, with Chroma Key Lab 2 that you didn't have prior to Chroma Key Lab 2 with the dual mask. I'm not going to select anything else here. I've already got a background folder selected, but I'll show you that in the background folder, you're selecting the folder, not the file for this selection. That's the folder that contains your background images. Once you have the folder selected, you can then select the background file that you want. And the reason it's done this way is because it will give you the option if you have this pause to select background for each image. If you select that, for each image that opens, it will give you this drop-down menu 
and allow you to use a different background for each image. I'm going to uncheck that because I don't want to do that for this. This next option, the layer to place foreground above, this is where the extraction is going to go into your PSD file. If you have this blank, then it will go on the very top of all the layers. But if you put in a layer, it's going to go above that layer in this template. Very important, you need to name this exactly what the name of the layer is in your template where you're putting the image. And it is case sensitive too. So in my template, it's called player with a capital P. So that's how I have to name it. In your template, it's going to, going to be something different most likely. The foreground positioning, um, we are using the portrait crop plugin for this workflow. So we have the three settings in portrait crop that we can adjust. It's pretty basic. It's just a zoom factor and then an X and a Y coordinate for the face. I'm going to have to pause to adjust checked. This is off by default, but I'm going to check it on here. And I usually don't use this once I've figured out the, um, the coordinates and the zoom that I want because it's pretty repeatable and you don't usually need to make adjustments per image, but I'm going to check that just so I can show you how it's working. The run action on final composition. This will run an action right before it merges your final composition. And this is optional, but it does allow you to um, create custom actions to do anything else in the workflow that's not included here that you need for your specific workflow. Is pause after um, completed composition to access Photoshop. I'm going to check that on. It's off by default. And just show you what this does. It does give you limited access to Photoshop to do some touch-ups to your image without um, stopping the batch processing. So now I'm going to load in a CSV file. This is optional. And what this does is it, um, you can use this to auto replace text in your image, also to auto scale text. Um, there's a few other things that it does. You can have it, you can specify a background per image. You can run actions pre and post, additional actions pre and post in this as well as override the file naming. And I discussed this in more detail in another video, but I'm just going to use it and kind of show you what it does here. So it looks like everything is what I need here. I'm just going to hit run. So now one thing it did, um, you might not have seen it, but it lassoed that hair and you saw it just for a split second where it did that lasso on that hair and it's running dual mask. And when I said that I had a, a cool new feature for, for Dual Mask and Chroma Key Lab 2, it has the ability to recognize a pre-lassoed section of hair. You still have to define the Dual Mask, but you can do it all ahead of time. And there's an easy way to batch process and do that that's much quicker than waiting for each image to build the composition. That way, once you run Chroma Key Lab, it automatically selects that hair. And you can, at that point, run dual mask and walk away, assuming you don't have any of these other um, pause steps checked, which we do in this case. So it brought up Portrait Crop, which is our face recognition um, plugin. Now it's only showing three app options for Portrait Crop. If you run Portrait Crop by itself, you'll see a lot more options. But for the case of Chroma Key Lab, it only needs these three, so that's all it's going to show you. And it's pretty basic. You've got a zoom. And this just zooms in or out. And then you've got an X and a Y. So the X and a Y are coordinates. And um, the Y is from the bottom to the top, 0 to 100. So 83 is 83% of the way from the image bottom to the image top. And that's where it's placing the center of the face. And it's recognizing this entire face. That's usually from the edge of the ear to the edge of the ear, chin to forehead. And then wherever the center of that ends up, um, that's the face center. And that's what you're positioning with um, the X and the Y. And so we're 83% of the way up. And then we can go left or right. So in this case, we're 83 on the Y and 36 on the X. And I'll show you here if you zoom in or out. The center of the face is going to maintain that same coordinate, in this case of 8356. 
and I'll change it to be on the other side of the image and zoom in here. You see it's maintaining that coordinate now of 83 on the Y and 68 on the X, and the X is, again is 0 to 100. And once you have this set up where you want, you might test a few images to make sure it's exactly what you want, but it's pretty repeatable. So for this template, I found that 36 on the zoom, um, 77 on the Y, and 50 on the X usually works pretty good. So I'm just going to use that and hit apply. And now it's brought up our pause step in Photoshop that I had checked. And I'll show you here. I'll move these windows out of the way. This allows you to touch things up in Photoshop. So for example, if you wanted to come into your, um, or I don't have anything to erase here, but let's say I had a spot on the screen that didn't get removed here and I wanted to erase that. I could go in, grab my eraser tool. Now these tools, when you right click, you won't always see those. And that's what it's meaning by you have limited access to Photoshop. It's really not limited so much as while the Chroma Key Lab script is running, it's kind of idling to let you do stuff in Photoshop, but Photoshop can't always fully render its menu items. And that's just the way Photoshop is, and there's no way for me to change the code in Chroma Key Lab to fix that. But anyways, if you left click now in these and scroll up and down, those appear. So I'm gonna grab my eraser tool. You can now erase. And another thing is your keyboard shortcuts, most of them don't work here, unfortunately, while we're paused, because Photoshop while a script is running, it dedicates most of the keyboard to that script and not to the Photoshop menu. So those shortcuts won't work until Chroma Key Lab is done. But you can resize. And again, um, it's functional, but doesn't render quite properly. But you can type in a different size here. And you can go in and use your eraser tool. You know, we could have went bigger on that as well so and also when you come in here you see it's auto replace the text as well as the position and the number that was based on that CSV file but let's say you want to change something let's say his number you had it entered on your wrong if you want to change that usually you would double click on text and that would bring up your bounding box but again the limited access to Photoshop you have to click here or I think you have to click there and highlight this and then click in here. And let's say his number was 65. We could then replace that and then accept that. And you could also, for instance, let's go to, say we wanted to scale his name. So One twenty to scale. So I believe that prior version of Photoshop brought up the bounding box immediately. This one apparently doesn't. But um, like I say, the access to Photoshop is limited. You can work around and do most of your stuff. Um, but don't expect to have full access to Photoshop. The one thing that does work as expected is if you want to just move something you can just select that and select your move tool. So if you want to move the foreground around, for example, if it's not exactly where you want it to be, you can come in here and move that left, right, or up, or down, or whatever you need. Anyway, I built that in even with the limitations, although I got a lot of questions on Chrome Key Lab 1. People say, ah, it doesn't work. The, um, the screen's not everything. I can, can't see everything, but there's no other way to make it work with a script running in the background. So that's just the way it is, unfortunately. So now we're done with that image and it's on to the next image. Now I'm going to abort this here and you may have to click inside of Photoshop and then hold down escape. If holding down escape doesn't work. Now when I say hold down escape to abort, 
I don't just mean tap it, I mean hold it down because if it's in the middle of doing an extraction, the escape key Photoshop has that locked to easy green screen. So if you just hit escape, it will abort easy green screen, but Chroma Key Lab then just goes on to the next thing it's doing. If you just hold it down, it'll abort easy green screen and then after that it will abort Chroma Key Lab and so it'll, it will abort everything. So now I'm just going to go back in here just to show you this workflow without the pause steps. I'm going to uncheck the places where I had it paused. Then I'm just going to run this. And then everything's going to happen automatically, so we're not going to have to um, manually adjust anything. Now that we have this set up where we want to be, like I say, that zoom is pretty, pretty reliable for the most part. Now I did want to show you this one thing here. It says uh, there was a batch aborted. Well, that was when I hit escape, it aborted the batch. But this is really cool because with version two, we now have the ability to resume that same batch. So if I hit resume, you see it's starting on image two of three. So if we finished the first one, and now we're on to the um, second image. And so that way, if you have to stop it for whatever reason, you do have a choice. It will let you choose to start over or to resume, so. Anyway, that's about it for this workflow. Thanks for watching, and if you're interested at all in this software, please be sure to visit our website, that is pixnub.com.